protecting the farm and the crops is one of the important jobs on any farm. Many types of fences are in use to avoid wild animals, stray cattle and thieves. Stone walls and wooden fences are the age-old practices. In non-forest areas, people use thorny twigs for the purpose. But it is very laborious, costly and difficult to manage on large farms. Few farmers practiced fencing with thorny metal wires. But this costly wire itself became the target of thieves. Live fencing by planting tall growing species on the borders is practiced everywhere. But none of these fences give absolute protection. Now, electric fence has come as a boon to solve this problem, especially in the forest areas. Traditional fences cannot stop wild bears, deers, bison, elephant and human beings. But this electric fence can keep away all of them. This is quite useful even in cities to protect properties and big compounds. There is no life threat by this legally permitted fencing system. But the person touching the fence will never forget the shock in his lifetime. This was first introduced by Ibex Gallagher, a New Zealand Indian joint venture brand. Now we find hundreds of indigenous brands in the open market. The main working principle of the electric fence is the flow of very high voltage of electric current once in a second in the metal wires of the fence. But there will be no continuous flow. This gives shock but no chance of casualty. Hence, this is a systematic method of chasing away the animals entering the farm. Flow of maximum of 10,000 volts and 6 joules energy is allowed in the fence in our country. Authorized manufacturers of the fence unit need to get clearance from CPRI and State Health Department and quality certification from BIS. Hence, this electric fencing system is totally legal and safe for the farmers. Battery, charger, fence energizer and the fence in the field are the main components of this system. If the fence covers large area, two batteries of 60 AH are necessary. For less than 10 acres, single battery of 35 AH is sufficient. These are tubular batteries. Charging is done by solar electricity. These two solar panels are meant for the purpose. This is solar charge controller. It avoids overcharging and emptying of these batteries. These batteries remain perfect for 7 to 8 years if maintained properly. Electric fence will work efficiently 24 bar 365 days with this system. However, one can use regular electric charger if the electric supply is good. Normally, the charger is kept on throughout the day. This may lead to overcharging of the battery, which will reduce its lifespan. Failure of the charger is also common. Ultimately, all these interrupt continuous working of the fence. However, the method of working of the fence unit remains same in both the systems and solar charging is not compulsory. This is fence energizer, the main component of the electric fence system. Wires from the positive and negative terminals of the battery are connected to these terminals at the base of this unit. This is on-off switch of the fence unit. This second switch decides the pulse and energy flow to the fence. It has low, medium and high positions which give out 56, 58 and 60 pulse per minute respectively. 
Normal output from the fence energizer is 10,000 volts. But depending on the condition of the fence, the voltage flow in the fence wires will be around 8,000 volts. Fence units of different capacities are selected based on dry or wetland, length of the fence, type of animal entering the farms, etc. This red knob is the phase terminal. Fence wires get energy from this terminal. This green knob is neutral or earthing. Electric fence system needs systematic earthing like regular electricity connection. This neutral terminal is connected to the earthing point as well as to the earthing line on the fence. Put water to the earthing pit to maintain moisture in dry season. Strong earthing will enhance the strength of the fence. This red indicator confirms the working of the fence unit. The design of the fence unit varies with the company, but the working principle remains same. Strength of the fence is measured with this neon tester. It has indicator lamps to show the condition as low, medium, good and very good. This is siren system. Fence will not work properly if phase and neutral wires join together or the live wire touches earth or live plants. It is difficult to observe the fence throughout the length every day. This siren starts blowing if the live fence touches earthing point. However, this siren system is not compulsory. This is cut-off fuse system. It physically disconnects the fence wires from the fence energizer unit. During rainy season, lightning flows very high voltage back to this unit from the fence wire. If not disconnected physically, unit gets destroyed. Hence, this cut-off fuse is a must. Now, let us understand the fencing system on the farm. Output wires from the fence energizer unit run to the fence posts. Granite or RCC poles are preferred for electric fence. However, small farmers use wooden poles. But it absorbs water in the rainy season, which drains the energy of the fence. Polypropylene or porcelain insulators of good quality are tied to the fence posts. Porcelain insulators are cheap, but breakage and loss of voltage is more. Some farmers use regular pipe piece as insulator to save money. But the fence fails to work due to earthing in the rainy season, spoiling the very purpose of the system. Metal wires are passed through these insulators and tied tightly at the ends. Decide the height of the fence and the number of wires depending on the animal entering the farm. Three to four wires are sufficient for pig, cattle, man, etc. Fencing for bison, deer, elephant, etc. needs six to nine lines. Use brake insulators in the corners where the fence changes its direction. This type of spring is available for wider entry gates. Rust-proof metal wires are used for this electric fence. Normally, farmers use GI wire of 12 to 14 gauge. This is cheaper than HT wire, but keeps good for 3 to 4 years only. It is better to use HT wires of 260 GSM, which lasts for 20 years. However, the working of the fence remains same irrespective of the type and thickness of the metal wire used. In heavy rainfall area, fence will have all phase or live lines. Body of the animal 
touching the fence itself will act as earthing and animal experiences the shock. But in dry area, it is better if one neutral line is provided in the fence. This will be connected to the neutral terminal of the fence unit. Apart from that, connect this earthing line to nearby live plants to strengthen earthing. This enhances the strength of the fence. Join all the phase lines on the fence with a wire and connect it to the phase terminal of the fence unit. We can measure the strength of the fence with this neon tester. But the regular electric tester will give shock to the testing person itself. Otherwise, connect a wire with cover to the phase line and touch another end to earthing line or to a live plant. It gives spark sound if the fence is working. In one more method, tie a burnt fluorescent tube to the fence pole. Connect one end to the phase line and another to the earthing line or to the ground. The tube flickers with the pulse of current in the fence. These tubes are fitted at the distant corners of the farm to confirm working of the fence in night hours. This is also useful to threaten the nocturnal wild animals. Maintenance of the electric fence is not so difficult. Clear live plants and vines touching the fence once in a month. Tighten the fence wires once or twice a year. These special pulleys are attached for the purpose. Tighten the wire by turning the pulley with this handle provided by the fence manufacturer and lock it. Avoid earthing of phase lines on the fence. Maintain required distilled water level in the battery of the fence unit. Clean the solar panel once in a year. To avoid deposition of salt on the battery terminals, clean it with a cloth and apply grease. Do not forget to open cut-off fuse during lightening. Amount of shock by the fence depends on the capacity of the fence energizer, length of fence, accuracy of earthing, etc. Voltage on the fence line will be between 5000 to 8000 volts. No animal will dare to touch the fence, at least in the rainy season. This farm spreads over 50 acres. This fence unit costs around 45,000 rupees, excluding the cost of wires and poles. Just to give an estimate, electric fencing for one acre will cost around 20 to 25,000 rupees. However, per acre cost will come down with more area together. Hence, cost of electric fencing for five acres together will be 60,000 rupees. Fence established with good quality materials and equipment will work properly for at least 10 to 15 years. This investment on electric fence is very reasonable when we need to spend lakhs of rupees on cultivation of crops.